<clears throat> Afternoon, beloveds. Kindly invite others. I know we are five minutes late. Uh, forgive us for that. Kindly invite others in. We are going to get started on this, this very important word. Um, don't mind me, there's a scripture the Lord is placing in my heart that I need to open up. As we log in, I do hope you're having a wonderful week, a very productive week. And I trust that the Lord is with you. Kindly alert others that may have come online at exactly 5 o'clock that we are now live. Kindly invite someone to log in to hear the word firsthand um, while it's still fresh. Dumela, 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 Mbadwana, Leklayu, Shorela. Like I said, there was something we're still taking care of, so please forgive me for taking a little bit of time. There were some technical issues um, that we had to take care of. But I do trust that we are well. I trust that God has been keeping us. Um, kindly invite someone to log in. It's a very important word. And it's a word that I believe is for all of us. As much as I stressed teachers, but you will understand that in one way or another, we are all teachers. Especially today, we're going to get a healthy understanding of what it means to, to teach um, so that we don't take for granted the responsibility that we've been given as teachers in one way or another in the lives of our children. So kindly um, let somebody know that we're alive so that they can also log in to hear the word of the Lord. Um, please indicate if you can hear me properly. If you can hear me properly, if my voice is audible. Today, I don't have an excuse. Uh, I'm very much well today. I highly doubt that um, there's going to be any coughing. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very much grateful for your prayers. Um, when you're charged with talking to people and addressing people, it's, it becomes very challenging because it hinders the very thing that uh, we do in life uh, I talk for a living <laughs> so thank you very much for um, for your prayers as you can see today I'm, 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 I'm very much lively uh, I'm even passing jokes so Please kindly invite somebody to log in. And, oh, before I forget, while you're doing that, do grab a pen and a paper because we're going to be taking some notes today. It's a very important word. It's going to help you tremendously. It blessed me so much. So I, I, I truly believe that it's going to help some of you, if not many of you, um, to understand what direction God wants you to take and to also understand what your purpose is and how you can also be of help to help others to also understand and come to the full knowledge of their own purpose or assignment. So please grab a paper and uh, a pen or your journal, something that you keep, something that you will not easily lose. Just grab that. I'm going to give you two minutes. Uh, to find something and once you have please indicate that you're good so that we can uh, come into a time of prayer uh, the sound and picture are so clear today we thank God <laughs> yes we thank God uh, beloveds potassium uh, I get a potassium so let's kindly do that please if you have those indicate that you do and we will get started on this word just kindly grab something 
to write with. Once you have done so, you can you you can indicate with a thumbs up or something. Just give me an understanding that you are good to go, and then we can get started on the word of the Lord. It's a very exciting word, like I said, and I pray that I will do it justice. Um, it's a word. It's it's things that the Lord has been teaching me and instilling within my spirit uh, for the past few years. I've been, you know. People don't know this, but there's what we call the University of God. I, I've been to school. I've been have been schooling, and there was actually a time um, by the end of was it end of 2020, the Lord started to indicate to me that um, I'm very close to graduation. There are times He would show me my marks, even in visions, how I'm doing in different faculties and different things that. Um, the Holy Spirit has been teaching me. So don't take these things for granted, beloveds. Uh, God wants to equip us in this time. And he wants to equip us also for re the real life, reality, the marketplace, the systems that we engage with on a daily basis. So that we understand that spirituality doesn't necessarily mean you leave your brain out. God wants to engage our brains so that we can be able to discern the things in the system that have been adopted to dumb us down and to make sure that do, we do not come into the fullness of what we're supposed to be doing in our lives. So take this very, very seriously and also pray for me that I will do it justice as I give it to you. I'm also wearing uh, my glasses. I'm coming as teacher today. So listen to teacher and make sure that you have everything you need for your lesson today jesus christ was also called rabbi because he taught and he gave people an understanding so please kindly uh indicate if you have everything that we need to get started i don't see anyone telling me that they're ready to go with their pen and journal are we are we ready to start this lesson beloveds Are we ready to start our lesson? Kindly indicate that you have everything that you need so that we can get started on this word. Okay, I'm starting to get a thumbs up. All set, all right. Okay, wonderful. Now, we're going to come into a time of prayer and give this to the Lord that we may both reap what we're supposed to reap in this day from this word. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for your love, for your protection, for your enlightenment in our lives as you continue to show us your ways, O King of Kings, as you continue to teach us your ways that will help us not only to survive in this season, but to thrive in this season and seasons to come. We thank you, O King of Kings, for giving us this opportunity to learn things that others did not get the opportunity to learn. We thank you, O King of Kings, for finally making us understand what the Bible meant and means when it says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. May we not be one of those of your people that will perish by reason of lack of knowledge. Father, we submit ourselves before you in this day like little children to say, teach us. We submit ourselves like sponges and we say, teach us that we may absorb everything from your spirit of truth that carries all knowledge in its purity in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our hearts that we may be able to hear your word in the name of Jesus. Open our, our hearts that they may be like fertile soil for your word to be able to land in a good place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we may see the same word germinate and grow into a fruitful tree that yields perpetual fruits in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us to understand, even as the word comes, where we fit in, where your word is concerned, O King of Kings. Help us to be able to discern the solutions and the answers that you are giving us in this time. Answers to questions that we've had in this very time, O Lord, of trouble and of shakings. Help us to understand what you are doing 
and what you are saying, that we may see your favor whilst we are experiencing and seeing all the turbulence and all the shaking and all the things that are happening, O King of Kings. May they be the very wind that help us to soar higher in the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse to be statistics in this time, but we do come into agreement with you to be made into those that we will use in the name that the stealer, the thief, will not steal your word from them. In the name of Jesus, I amplify your voice in their ears, O oh Lord, that every other voice will be drowned down by your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, that they will be able to engage with your word in a way that they will, be, they will not only listen to it, but they will be obedient to it in their lives, that they may see your faithfulness and the fruitfulness of your word. In your name, Lord, I pray even for myself that I may step out of the way and only present myself as a vessel that you will use to communicate not only to your people but also unto me, O oh Lord. May you minister to us in this time that we may know what road and what way to take. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Hallelujah, beloveds. The presence of God has been with me the whole day so strongly. So strongly. And I'm not just saying that. There's a lot that God is doing in this time. Earlier when I was in prayer, he just summoned me into prayer. I was just thankful. I was just thanking him uh, and praying for, for ministers and, and praying for leaders and praying for God to touch us, even as individuals. To, to be pure in everything that we do. You know, purity is the most important and the most priceless thing that one can possess. Purity ensures your future. Purity ensures your life. Because when you do things from a pure place, the devil has nothing on you, literally has nothing on you. He may try, whatever he may try in your life, but he has nothing on you. So I need you guys to just pray for purity tonight and just say, Lord, may everything that I do be from a place of purity. May everything that I engage with in my life, even my thoughts, may you purify my thoughts so that whatever desires I have, they are being generated by the Holy Spirit. It is not out of greed, it is not out of selfish ambition, it is not out of anything that is not in line with your ways. But it is being birthed from your spirit, it's being birthed from your heart. When you are in that space, you don't even have to worry about who's trying to bewitch you. You don't even have to worry about your enemies, who's trying to bring you down. Because when you are in that place, you are in him. And anyone who is in him, the devil has to go through God first before they can get to you. And we know what that looks like. So I just wanted to encourage you very quickly with that word so that we, we are encouraged in making sure that we constantly check ourselves and allow Holy Spirit to pressure us of anything that is not pure within us. Because we go through a lot of things in life offense may come it always comes knocking but if we don't entertain it and maintain purity we will go far in our walk with the lord so kindly uh, engage with me in this very important topic today we are going to be addressing the educational system now when the lord started talking to me about these things in 2016 I will not lie to you, I, I didn't uh, grasp the fullness of it. And I had to ask him a lot of questions for me to understand what he was saying. Because he, that's when he started talking to me about the change that was coming, the drastic change that was coming to the world, the drastic change that was coming to systems. So when God talks about a new era, and he talks about taking over the systems of this world. We need to understand that the time that we are in 
as God begins to take over the systems, what does this really look like? What does it mean? And how is it going to affect us? It's something that we need to understand because it is now taking place. It is now happening. It's not something that is coming. It is something that is already here. We're in a time of transition where these things have begun to take place and we're starting to feel them in our own personal lives. So today we're going to be touching on this and we're going to be uh, dealing with education. That is the one that we're going to be dealing with today. In days to come, as the Lord permits, we will be getting into other uh, systems. But this is the one system that affects us all. There's no how. Uh, you can exist and not be affected, whether in a good way or in a bad way, by education. So I just want to read for you what I wrote during the time that the Lord was giving me this word about what we term the word education. Education is a system that trains you and prepares or equips you to walk and live out your purpose or assignment on earth as it is in heaven. I will repeat myself. Education is a system that trains you or prepares you or equips you to walk and live out your purpose or assignment on earth as it is in heaven. I've made this statement before to say that when we come before God, He is not going to ask any other question. He's not going to be looking for any other thing other than, did you do what I assigned you to do in, on earth? Did you do your assignment as per given by me on earth? That is the only thing that God will be testing. When the Bible says that our works will be tested by fire, and only those works that were done in purity and in truth will survive that fire. It means that God is only looking for those and he's only keen to those that are doing what he has assigned them to do on planet Earth. Now the one question I want to ask you today is given the state of our education system as it is today, especially those of you who are teachers, who've been working in the government system, whether the government system or the private system, it does not matter because they are not far off from one another. The one question I want to ask you is, as the system is today, can you honestly stand confidently and say, this is what the agenda of the system is, to equip young people, children, even adults, because you are never too old to learn. It is to equip people in coming into the fullness of their assignment, in knowing their assignment as per given by God in this world. Can we say with the subjects that we have, the limited options that we have in schools, we are doing our best to cater for the different facets and the different giftings that God has given his children so that they may serve the world and their generation or they may serve him rather via that generation by reason of what he has given them to serve with. Can we honestly say that today? And if we cannot say that about our system today, then what are we saying? What are we teaching our children in our schools? What are we molding them into? Who exactly are they going to be serving? Because they are being prepared for service. But the question is, who are we preparing them to serve? These are things that we need to, to now awaken to, beloveds, and understand what has been happening in this time, what has been happening for the longest time, and what God is putting the bricks on 
to say this cannot continue any longer. And it does not matter how I'm going to put the bricks on it because if I as the Lord do not put the bricks on it, no one is going to do it. Because we don't like change. We are afraid of change. But at the same time, the very thing that we are so loyal to is killing us. But we remain loyal to it nonetheless. So education at its core is meant to equip an individual, prepare an individual, enlighten an individual according to their calling as forgiven by God. Now for the longest time, we've been made to believe that, you know, callings are only, they only have to do with the church. They only have to do with the fivefold ministry. So that we don't interrogate, people don't interrogate their, their giftings. They don't respond to the call of God according to their giftings simply because they do not fall in these five or they are not pastors or they are not prophets, apostles. And so, okay, if you are called to something that is outside the church, you don't necessarily have to ask God and, you know, seek God for an understanding about that which he has entrusted you with. The world can take care of that. Harvard can take care of that. Yale can take care of that. Princeton can take care of that. The University of Botswana can take care of that. Tapolo Hojina School can take care of that. What are we saying, beloved? And for the longest time, and you see, this is the thing about a lie. A lie can look legit for some time. But time will tell whether something is true or not. Because truth never changes. Truth is. It's just is. Because when we talk about truth, we're talking about God. So God is forever the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. That is why his word doesn't change. But his word is ever relevant with every generation that we enter. His word is ever relevant. When you read it with the spirit of God, it brings you into enlightenment and understanding of the demands of your time. Whether those demands are in the marketplace, in the political space, in the governmental space, it does not matter. Holy Spirit is all-knowing. And when you look at these schools that I just mentioned, when you look at Harvard, when you look at Princeton, when you look at Yale, they are one of the highly, highly recognized universities in the world. But when they were founded, they were founded under Christ. They understood very well that in order for a human being to thrive, in that which they have been called to do in this world. They have to first know God because God is the one that then reveals who they are and what they have been assigned to do in this world. If they've been assigned to be an engineer of our time, God is the one who is first to reveal that. So if God is the one to first reveal that, then that means that the first thing that our children need to be taught is that God is the acknowledgement of the Creator. Because when you acknowledge Him, it's like taking a manual to that which you just, an appliance you just bought, and honoring the fact that the Creator or the inventor of that appliance knows its full potential. And if you want it to have a, a long lifespan, and if you want to benefit the, from the fullness of what that appliance has to offer you, you need to listen to the manual of the creator of or the inventor of that appliance. It's the same thing, beloved. For in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the Lord tells us that all things in this world that we engage with on a daily basis, they are meant to help us and to teach us higher realities in terms of our relation with our God. You need to know and understand for you to thrive, for you to know and not be confused and not be frustrated 
in terms of what to do in this world. For you to pursue something with the assurity that this thing, no matter the challenges that I go through, I rest in the fact that this is what I am supposed to be doing. Therefore, the challenges are only sharpening me. The challenges are only helping me to think more, to, 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 to go in deeper in my understanding of this thing so that I may be a solution to my generation with regards to that which I am or that which I have been called to do. This is what our God is bringing to the table concerning education in this day. So when we look at our educational system today, for the longest time, yes, it looked like it was working. People were getting, you know, that they were graduating, getting their degrees, and then straight into the workplace. They were being sucked in in different places, be it the health uh, sector or health, uh, the, the, the educational sector, or mining, or whatever the case may be, people were easily, they could easily find jobs. They could easily find a place that could absorb them. They didn't have to think much because they were pretty much, their life was pretty much made up for them by the system. And even though it looked like it was working, it was never how God designed or desired for us to live. You are meant to be active in you becoming what you are becoming in life. You are meant to be well aware of what you are becoming as you become it in this world. So that you may be able to engage with the fullness of your potential. Because God has called every single one of us to be a solution. And if you are to be a solution... You cannot only be a regurgitator of that which you have been absorbing from the system. I really need you to understand as we go on, word for word, that we are together. What I'm saying right now is, with the current system, majority, and some of you can even attest to this, majority of you, you don't remember what you learned at school. And those of you that know or remember what you learned at school, majority of you is not even applicable where you work if you have a job. Majority of you, what you learned at school or what you had crammed at school is not even applicable in your life right now. Now, the question then becomes, if education is as important as we say it is in our lives, then why is it that right now, the years that we have spent at school, the very years that we have spent learning what we were learning, all of those things right now are not helping us to live a decent life, to be a solution. Because we don't know what to do. We are faced with issues, very touching issues, issues that are touching you from home, issues that are affecting your finances. Issues that are affecting your health. Issues that are affecting your children, your community. But we have no answers to these, questions, to these issues. If we are a learned people, if what we were learning at school is supposed to benefit us in this time, why is it that none of us are able to come up with solutions other than those that have been given us or feeding us that system. We need to be very smart and wake up in this time, beloveds. We need to ask ourselves, have we been indoctrinated to think in a certain way so that we may never really think? You will understand very quickly what I'm talking about. 
Have we been indoctrinated by the system that we have adopted for the longest time to be non-thinkers? Many of you today, the system is about to vomit you. The working force, your jobs, where you work, your, the companies that you work for, even the government is about to vomit you out. If the education system that we have been so loyal to was meant to equip us in such a way that we can be able to withstand all the harsh conditions that life comes with in different seasons and we're still able to come up with solutions and find ways to adapt to the new and find a way forward, critical thinking. If the system that we were part of was promoting critical thinkers. Why is it that majority of us are crying today? Why is it that many today don't know what to do, where to turn? I'll tell you why. Because the system was never meant to equip you for life. It was never meant to equip you to serve God and serve your generation with the best and the fullness of what you truly carry and the fullness of your true potential. The system was meant to dumb you down. The system as it is today was meant to make you believe that if you do not or if you are not able to thrive within the very limited options that you are given to learn, then you are dumb, then you are stupid, then your, your future is very bleak. There is nothing for you. How is it in medicine? How is it in social studies? How is it in science? And when I talk about these subjects, I'm talking about you continuously being fed. I'm talking about those that are being called the smart ones are the ones that are able to cram. They are the ones that have been gifted by God with the ability to memorize and remember very well everything that they have been fed. Those that are able to regurgitate that which they've been given. No challenge. Not a system that teaches you something and allows you to create after that as per given that which you've been given. A system that allows you to critically think beyond what you are being fed, to come up with new solutions, new innovative ways. Now, if you've been taught that kind of system, and then when you are older, before they become an innovator, how are you going to do that? How are you going to be able to be an innovator when your whole life you've been taught to memorize? Things that are outdated even at that time. Because the world is ever changing. The world is ever moving. And only God knows what is relevant in your time. Only God knows what your gift looks like in your generation. Hakisura remove so far. Only God knows if you are called to be a chef, what is relevant in your time? What does it look like to be a chef in your time? What skills do you need to acquire that will help you to be globally competitive as a chef? But if we are constantly teaching you, 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 are, you are supposed to be a chef, but how many years is it from standard one to form five? Can you imagine? Standard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then five more years. That's what, 12 years of learning irrelevant subjects. Don't get me twisted. There are some things that we all need to know and learn. Very important. But every single one of you is called to specialize 
in that which God has called you to be in life. And even those of you that are in the very lane that God has called you to, you have not even been, you haven't even begun to, to scratch the surface of the fullness of your potential. Because your years are being squandered by unnecessary things that you have to, the system is telling you that you need to know for you to be qualified as whatever it is that you are called to do. And God in this time is going to be dealing with all of these things. When we look at Jesus, because the Bible tells us that we are to look unto Jesus in all things. There is nothing that Jesus does not cover, beloved. There is absolutely nothing that he doesn't cover. And those of you that are keen to know the ways of God, ask Holy Spirit questions. Because Holy Spirit answers according to what Jesus is saying. He answers according to the heart of Jesus. So anything that you need clarity within life, ask Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit will give you the fullness of truth and will not give you outdated things that may mess up or that may suppress what you carry. That will not help in the honing of the skills that God has given you to thrive in the time that you are given. God has not called any of us to be paupers. The gift that you carry that we have suppressed for the longest time is the same gift that is meant to feed you. It is the same gift that is meant to make you shine. It is the same gift that is meant to make room for you with men. The same gift. So if we bury that gift with our school system, with our educational system, what is to become of you? Because heaven has already made provision for you in your lane of assignment. And because heaven is not confused, it is not going to make room for you anywhere else. So you have two options. It's either you become poor or you are going to be corrupt on your way up. You only have two options if you are outside the will of God for your life. Corruption or poverty. And you can quickly understand which one you belong to in this tree. Anyone, anyone who is making it outside the will of God, know that whether they know it or they don't know it, they have to be corrupt one way or another in order to do that, in order to make, for, for, for there to be room for them in this world. So today we are going to be addressing this issue. The reason why God is shaking the systems, the reason why God is collapsing the systems is because in this very time, God says enough is enough. Not only do I want to feed and bless you and give you the fullness of your inheritance in this world, and I'm tired of seeing you toiling. I'm tired of seeing you trying this and that, that doesn't work because it is far from that which I've called you to do. And the only way you can tap into your inheritance is not if a man or a woman of God lays hands on you and says you are blessed. But it is when you come into the full knowledge of your assignment as forgiven by God and you start to walk the path of that assignment. That is more like a treasure path or a treasure map because it leads you into that which God himself has specially reserved for you. And no one, listen, when you are in the will of God, no witch can do anything to you. None. The will of God is the safest place. The will of God is the one place you cannot be challenged in. The will of God has heaven backing you. When you tap into the will of God for your life, you awaken your angels, your destiny angels. They come and they start working alongside you. They give you hints. They give you understanding. No, don't turn to the left, turn to the right. You get visions, you get dreams of certain individuals, and God gives you an understanding. This one is coming with a business deal. This one is coming with this. 
don't engage. This one is coming, engage. God shows you all of these things. So that you know how to engage with people as well that come into your life. Some of us, we have either gotten into the wrong connections or we missed God-given connections because we don't know the path that God has in store for us. We don't understand it. We don't know. We, we don't have a, a, a clear vision of what it looks like and who it entails. So therefore, we have either squandered those opportunities or we don't know where those opportunities are and we are getting frustrated because we keep trying so many things and we are working so hard. But because we are not corrupt by nature, working hard as a child of God with zero knowledge of where you are supposed to be will result in serious frustration. Because you will not be able to bend the rules. But at the same time, the very place or the only place you can thrive, you know not of. So what happens? You stay in a place of defeat and watch the corrupt thrive. And you ask yourself, Lord, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> because I know how so-and-so operates and they're getting blessed left right and center and i'm here and i'm sweating and i'm trying to do it the right way could it be that corruption wise you're a good person you, you you don't go down that road and you are working so hard but you are working hard in the wrong place i don't want to get ahead of myself education today i just want to address it according to this particular topic education so majority of you you are called to be teachers majority of you you love it it's a passion that you have but you find yourself grafted into a system that dictated for you what teaching looks like and you ended up becoming stale I think those that have been teachers can relate to this one. Can you imagine? Maybe you've been in a primary school teacher for 10 years. You already know what you are going to be teaching them. You don't even have to open your, your, your notes anymore because year in, year out, you are teaching the same thing. Maybe here and there they can change a few things, but overall, you literally are repeating your life every year. You have to repeat that which you did last year. Your life is predictable. You are not bringing anything new to the table. You are not producing anything new, even in terms of your, 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 the, the, the people that you are teaching. Every new batch that comes in gets out. By the time they get out, it's the same products as the products that you produced. The previous week. Now, make me understand how that is living. And when I say how that is living, I'm not just talking about you as an individual. I'm talking about the fullness of that process. Because anything that is alive is ever growing. Anything that is alive is ever changing is ever becoming more and more beautiful. It grows, it thrives, it produces, it's living. But if we are going to be producing the same thing, year in, year out, how is that thing alive? How are you alive? You can be breathing, you can be doing all the things that will give people an impression that you are alive. But are you really alive, beloved? Some of you are crying because you've lost your jobs. Your contracts were not renewed. It's a blessing. I know it doesn't sound like it. It doesn't feel like it. Believe me, it's a blessing. And those of you that are left and even by the time the shakings stop, you are still left in the system. Understand one thing. 
because there's an assignment for both of you. There's an assignment for those that are being taken out of the system. And then there's an assignment for those that are remaining in the system. And I want you to, both of you to understand your assignments in this time as per given by God. And if you follow the assignment of God for your life in this time, believe me, you are going to see tremendous change. Tremendous change. Even in the way that you, you relate with your students. Even in the way that you relate with your career. You will even see it in a different light than the light you've been seeing it. Because now you are coming into the fullness of its potential. Now you are coming into the full understanding and you are seeing it for what it truly is. There is so much that God is still doing in this time, beloved. Happy Royal we sing. How scary this is the end of you. This is just the beginning. I need you guys to understand that. Even if you are, you are to have a few setbacks here and there, because and this and that, those are not even setbacks. Allow the chips to fall where they may. Don't even stress about it. Allow it. Allow whatever you have to lose, asset wise, lose it. It wasn't even an asset to begin with. I'm talking to those that are ready to hear truth and that are ready to be taken through this journey by God so that by the time they emerge on the other side, everything allotted to them by God is released into their lives. Anytime, even the Bible tells us when it compares, when it talks about the kingdom and the value of the kingdom, it tells us about a man who saw a pearl in a field and he went and sold everything that he had just so that he can get that field for that pearl. That pearl, he saw the value of that pearl that he gave up everything just to get that pearl. When God begins to open your eyes about what you carry, about what is in the inside of you, the fullness of your potential, everything that you have now that the enemy may be holding you back from following the will of God by because if you don't do that you might have to sell the car and and pay those things off you you're going to have to lose this and this and that lose them if you want the fullness of what God has for you lose them if you have to because you are not defined by them and where God is taking you, those that will talk, those that will laugh at you now, you won't even have to you won't even have to reply them with words. That which awaits you on the other side of allowing God to have His way with you, it is going to speak on your behalf, volumes on your behalf. Just minding your own business and doing what God has called you to do. There is an inheritance for every single one of you. But that inheritance lies behind the will of God for your life. The entirety of the will of God for your life. God is not an irresponsible father. He is a father that ensures that before he can give you the fullness of your inheritance... You are ready to handle that which is going to give you. You will not squander it in the things that have nothing to do with your assignment. Because at the, end of, at the end of the day for him, it's about you accomplishing your assignment. Everything that you get, material-wise and, and whatnot, is nice. But to him, that is not the primary thing. The primary thing to him is, are you in his will? Are you pursuing what you're supposed to be pursuing. So as it stands now, some of you, God is calling you to homeschool some children so that during that homeschooling period, he is teaching you the new system. He is showing you the gaps in the current system and he is teaching you his ways. This is what God is calling some of you to. Those of you that are parents, 
I'm going to appeal to you as well to be open to what God is doing. Your child is not being experimented with. Believe me, if it's something that is being done by God, you are also giving your children an opportunity to learn the right things, an opportunity for their skills and their true potential to be honed. Do you know how frustrating it is? Ole Mozadi. Ole Kasengwe Lesengwe Uduela Di Tutara Uduela Sengwe Lesengwe Ubeza Wana Udidira Zote Meuba Nahoro Wana Yo Ha Kwa Ba. Some of them, yes, Kibu Homa, they are not doing enough and what not, but the majority of them, it is not for them. Period. And we only respond. The, the only place where you effortlessly respond without anyone, anyone forcing you to do what you are doing is when you are doing that which your Father in heaven has laid in your heart to do. Listen, we are taught that the very things that we love should be habits and we should do serious things before we can do those things because it's a naked hobby and you know hobbies are not important life is serious and you need to find something very serious to do in order for you to thrive and and to be able to live a life a sustainable in every living you need to to do these these things they are the ones that we as humanity have adopted as the most crucial but has God said that? How dare we question what God has instilled within us as the very thing we need to pursue in life? Some of you, like me, for example, my son loves drawing. He loves drawing. And there was a time I was still on default mode. Busy trying to beat a child up into what you want. He loves drawing. He loves astrology. Learn, I don't even have to, to beg him to do He learns by himself in those areas. He loves mathematics. And when I look at all of this, and the other day the Lord told me, buy him uh, these blocks. I, I keep forgetting that name. Legos. Yes, thank you. He said, buy him Legos. I was like, no, isn't he too old for them? He said, buy them. So I went and bought them. I bought him Legos. And the things that he's creating with those things, because even I wouldn't have been able to come up with those things. Because to me, those building blocks, the things he comes up with, I'm like, how did you think that? How were you able to? The gifts. So you see, when we start to allow and are not resistant to the leading of God on how to best steward, because we are stewards, whether as teachers or parents, we are stewards of the gifts that God has given our children. And Holy Spirit is the one that then guides us in how we, we are to best steward those gifts. Because room for those children is not going to come from anything else other than the gifts that God has given them. And if we kill those gifts and we are busy trying to get them to be something they are not, we are in trouble. As we have seen, how many children are in, in the streets today? Because form three, form five. How many? Yet they are brilliant. Yet our world wouldn't be where it is today had we given their gifts a chance. God's way. We don't know what these children care. You see them, you see them, you see them, no one would intentionally just sabotage themselves. It's because they didn't fit our system. It's simple. They were a misfit for our system. And when you are a misfit for this system, 
it vomits you out. It tells you you are a failure. It tells you you will never amount to anything because you don't fit within its box. Nonsense. And it's time we stop what we have been doing. It is wrong and we are going to account for the gifts and the dreams we have killed that God had placed in many simply because they didn't match and they didn't fit into the little world we have created because it's a very little world and God is dealing with it in this season. He's saying, will you give me a chance with my children, with yourself, that I may show you what I, the Lord, because only a few did God do a good job, but the rest, that is what we are saying. The truth of the matter is, it is our systems that are failing us. The very systems we are so loyal to, some of you, your children have been called to be in baking. God has, has ensured that Wanayo is going to thrive in this industry. Pastry. They are going to thrive in pastry. They are going to, to come up with designs that are going to blow minds. They are going to create that which has never been created in that industry. But how is it similar? As an Arabola or Europa, let's go to the Silo, as an Arabola, if Diko you be. A bail of an error, who will eat the KO baby? As an afterthought, are they really going to thrive in it the way God had intended? What if we had given them an opportunity from a young age? By the time they are 23, also 15 years experience. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? We literally have the ability to produce as a country, as a nation, multi-millionaires at the age of 16, 17, 18, if we were to follow the model of God for education and stop feeding children what they don't need for years. And then when it has failed, the very thing they're supposed to do comes in as an afterthought. It is enough. We need to see. Even those that have given us that system, they don't subscribe to it. You go to the Western world, the minute they see and spot, this child is good at one, two, three, at three years, five years, they start to hone that skill immediately when they notice it. That is why you have teenagers that are multi-millionaires in those countries. Because they don't subscribe to this. They don't. So we need to come in this time and allow God to empty everything that we had adopted and that we had learned. We need to unlearn a lot of things and allow God it's going to be scary. It's going to be a scary path. Because you're going to be wondering, am I doing that? Because you've never done it before. You are coming against what you've learned your entire life. As a teacher, you are given a very, very sensitive assignment. You either make or break individuals. And as a teacher, ordained by God to teach all of you you have been given grace and you're going to tap into that grace in this season the grace to discern what gift God has laid in every child that is going to come your way God is not only going to give you the ability to discern it but he's also going to give you the ability and the strength and the grace to harm it and that child is going to become the fullness of what they're supposed to be. Some kids are not even meant for formal school. They're just meant to be in, in, in a sporting school. 
because that is what they're called to. We are always marveling at young, young professionals, young soccer professionals, 16, 17, that are playing for their national team, that are thriving. You can see this child has experience. They're saying he's, he's 17, but the experience they have, it, it's outstanding. Why? He's been playing football his whole life. There is somebody else you pay to know and understand those things as he needs them in his house because you have the money for it. Somebody else is learning that and because they'll have money, they'll be able to employ different people who specialize in different things to help and assist them with what they need in their life. You don't have to know all things. And the more we want to teach and instill all things of different professions in our children, we are stretching them thin. And whatever they're going to yield in their God-given assignments is going to be according to how much they have allotted that. And I can tell you very in this very time that is not a lot because they're overly stretched with a whole lot of things they don't need. It's time to be smart as parents. It's time to be smart as a nation. If we want to see the very things that God has spoken over this nation, listen, when God gives a prophecy, then what happens is that after that prophecy is a process that leads in the physical realm, that leads to the manifestation and the unfolding of that prophecy. Prophecy doesn't mean magic. It doesn't mean those things are just going to pop out of nowhere and suddenly, oh my God, our country is so developed, it looks like the Western world, this and this and that. No, honey. After the prophecy, we go through process where then God starts to give us the mind that matches what he has declared, that we may see it that we may touch it, that we may engage with it in the land of the living. God is calling teachers and he's calling you to a place of prayer that God may reveal to you what kind of a teacher he's calling you to be. Some of you are called to specialize. You are not even supposed to just teach anything and everything. God is calling you to specialize. There is something that you know. You've been given the ability by God to be able to, 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 to pull that potential out of others. You are good at it. You are more like a coach of that particular field. But when you think logically, how many are going to subscribe to that? How many would just want to learn vocabulary? Some are called to be presenters. Some people are just called to be presenters. They have the confidence, they have everything, their looks, all of those things, but they lack vocabulary. They lack the lingo. And you have it. You teach, you can, you can be a teacher of professional people who are in the public space. You can be the very person that teaches etiquette. This is what you do. That can just be that what you teach. You just teach etiquette. That's it. Many people get opportunities to go into places where they're not familiar with. They carry the blueprints, they carry the solutions, but they lack the manners. But you know the manners. You don't know anything that they know. You are not called to those places. You are not called because you carry nothing for those tables. But you carry the how to those that are invited to those tables. Everything in life has to be taught. Everything in life has to be taught. 
So there are many that are called to teach, but they don't even know that they are called to teach. You are called to teach something. Even as we are here, I'm teaching you something. Tomorrow you will teach me something that you know. It's a very important, very, very important thing in our lives that either makes or breaks us. And it's high time we gave it the kind of attention that it deserves. It's high time we tabled this before God and allow God to teach us his model of teaching. His model. Our government systems, I've said this before, God is going to crumble all the current system. The models of the current systems are all going to be taken down. All of them. All of them. So you decide in whatever system you are called to, whether you are going to remain and crumble with that which is crumbling or you are going to come to God and allow him to sharpen you and get you ready for that which is. The world is talking about the great reset. And I've said this many times. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It doesn't matter how much they may look like they know what they're talking about. And it's going to be implemented. Make sure that you check with God what is going to make it in this great reset. Because there's the worldly reset and then there's the godly reset. And like I said, we're in a time of kingdom come. So God is going to have his way in this season. I just want to read something for you that the Lord had me write concerning education. I, I, I really hope that it will bless you. He says, you cannot walk in that which you do not know you have. For you to walk in the fullness of your assignment or life purpose, you must first know, that is, the knowledge, you must first have the knowledge of what it is and how it functions. But first, one must recognize the need for wisdom, which then births what? Knowledge. For knowledge of who and what they are called for. Wisdom appreciates, notices, and recognizes the need to acquire knowledge, which is the gateway to pertaining to our, which is the gateway to knowing and understanding the meaning and purpose of our lives. So when we look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, it talks about, let me just read it for you. It talks about wisdom and knowledge. It says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Very, very important. Very, very important. He says, wisdom is the principal thing. What does this mean? Before anything else, we were supposed to teach our children, be it in schools or at home, wisdom. And what does the Bible tell us that wisdom is at the very beginning of it or at the very core of it? It says wisdom is the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Kakere, where we sprinkle God on top of something that is not here, on top of a, of a wrong foundation or a different foundation altogether. I'm talking about God being the foundation of our educational system, where children know and learn who God is and have an appreciation of God. When you fear God, there's a practical understanding of the fear of God. The fear of God is not just say, oh, I fear God. No. That is not the fear of God. The fear of God is shown and is made evident by how much we obey the instructions that God gives us for our lives. When you see or you begin to see that the fear of God is starting to be made manifest in your life is when you start to obey God without any questions. Without trying to get understanding first or trying to see first how this thing is going to work before you can obey Him. 
because that is not obedience. Obedience goes hand in hand with faith. And faith says you do it without full understanding, without the full knowledge of how it's going to work out. You don't know how it's going to work out. You just know that God said it, and because he said it, you're going to trust him, and you're going to do it. That's wisdom. That right there is wisdom. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians, when we get to knowledge, because it says wisdom births what? Knowledge. And the Bible tells us that without knowledge, we perish. Like I said, being alive doesn't necessarily mean being able to breathe in and out. Being alive has to do with heaven recognizing you and your works on earth because they match that which is written of you in heaven. You are alive when there is mobility in your life as per proven and as per instructed by heaven, as per recognized by heaven. You can be very much mobile on earth, but very much stagnant in the eyes of God concerning anything you are doing that may not be in the will of God. So when we teach our children the ways of God, when we teach them who God is, and we teach them the ways of our God and how to conduct themselves according to our God, and we teach them to seek knowledge and understanding of the hope of His calling for their lives, we teach them to pray for God to reveal to them and to allow them to move and to engage according to what he has given them and according to what they've been entrusted with. We start to see their true colors from a very young age and we are able to pick and understand where to place which one and how to engage with what God has given them from a very young age. I'm just going to read for you as well. The, the, the very things that God, the very changes that God is bringing to the education system so that those of you that will hearken to the voice of God in this time as teachers of whatever it is that God has called you to teach, you may be able to teach those things uh, placing in mind what God is doing and working hand in hand with the Holy Spirit according to what God is doing. So this is what the Lord had to say. He says, let me just read it for you from the very beginning. It's, it's such a powerful word that the Lord gave me. He said, Jesus was indeed a teacher in the wholesome meaning of the word and office. His disciples were the students Peter, contrary to the belief of religious leaders, was learned, not of the system of this world, but of the kingdom system of education. The system of this world is a Babylonian system. That is, it's a mixed system of good and corruption. Jesus, in this scripture, that we have darkness for light, for anything that is not true or pure is not true light. And if the system of this world is mixed, that means whatever good in the mixture is not really good. And the more we behold and practice what we learn from it, the greater the darkness that gives illusion of light becomes in the inner man of the beholder. This is why we are charged to look unto Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. And then God gave me examples of what he's to do with uh, the schools that he wants us to adopt in this country. One, he says, the school of creativity. Secondly, he said, musical school. A musical school with all the instruments. And here's the thing. The, the reason why God wants us to have specialized schools or schools of specialization. It's not to say that the children will just be going there for music, no. There will be other things, but they will not be at the very center of their, their learning. They have to learn how to read, yes. They have to learn a few things about 
uh, mathematics and whatnot, that will help them to be able to engage with the rest of the world. But that will not be the core of what they're being taught. Majority of the time, they'll be honing their skills according to whatever they're called to do in the music industry. That is why God wants specialization in this time. And he's saying, when we resume the new system, we are going to see all these schools in place. And that is one of the major things that are going to cause our country to thrive and to be competitive at an international level in all the different giftings and talents that we have in this nation. The Lord says schools of creativity, musical instrumental schools. We're going to have soccer specifically. He said this one is going to stand on its own. So I'm believing God for even for other sports that may not be related. We're going to have schools that are just specifically for a specific cause or a specific sport so that those children can specialize and thrive and become professionals in that area of expertise. And the Lord says different regions offering different courses, mainly based on the regions, God given nature's gifts, strengths. I will explain that for you. I write according to my own understanding. So the Lord is saying, let's say for example our country, we know that with the different regions, God has given us different uh, resources, different things. We have been blessed with different things in different regions in our country. So when we take, for example, uh, the north or the, the, I can talk about this side, is it, what is it called? Side is Abu Mawo, what do we call it? The Delta side, Yabo Okavango. We know that that side, that region, is mainly what we mainly know it for what for tourism right and then you have different regions in our country that are concentrated with uh, resources from the the ground where mining is mainly uh, concentrated and then we have regions where like south where gaps is we know that is where the cbd is that is where the, the financial hub is. You have places like, I, I mentioned Seroe the other time, that region that God said is the region that he has given wisdom. So I don't know what uh, that region will be specializing on. But everything that God does is not by accident. Where you find yourself born, majority of the time, I'm not saying everyone who's born in that area is supposed to do what is in that area, but majority of the time, God wants those people in that, in that particular space or that particular region to specialize in that which he has given them because nobody can know it like they know it. You see, places that where God maybe has blessed us with medicinal trees, there's no one to know it better or to specialize more than the very people who have always or who were born in that area because they engaged with those trees their whole life. And what God is asking us to do is to just formalize the very schools that he has already given us in the different places according to what he has given us in those areas. You have places like the Delta, Okavango, Maun, Shakawe, all those areas. There's so much. You know, I've engaged with, with I've, I've had the privilege of engaging with a few people who right now are very much underprivileged and they are living be below the poverty belt. But these people are so knowledgeable. There is one man who even knows how to communicate with elephants. That is a very rare gift. And he wasn't taught by anyone. He didn't go to school for it. It's something he knows. So you can imagine if we lived in a fair world, which is about to get very much fair, such people with their expertise, when they go to different camps to go and teach how to engage with animals, how much do you pay professionals who come to different places to give you uh, 
but it is the corporate packages of teaching those people or in empowerment uh, retreats or whatever you call them where people are going to be empowered and taught what they need to learn in order for them to thrive in what they have been called to do in that workspace. God has given so many people different things in this life to help them, to provide for them. But we overlook those things and we want to now graft them into a system that goes against the natural space that God has given them. But everything that has been availed by God, where they thrive without even having to, to struggle. They will tell you. They may not know English, but believe me, they are so knowledgeable. And that's another thing we need to understand. What is knowledge? What is knowledge? What is to be knowledgeable? Knowledge has to do with beholding God. In Ephesians, the Bible tells us that when Paul was praying, he said that you may know him. That you may know him. Get wisdom. I pray that you have wisdom. And I pray that you, you may know him. What does it mean? Why is it so important to know God? Because the more you know God, the more you get to know you. Because when you get to know God, he starts to reveal things about himself that have to do with what you are supposed to provide or serve your generation with. If you are called to natural medicine, that is how God is going to present himself to you. So when you get to know him, it actually means that you are getting to know him as a healer. He teaches you about you know, the healing properties of different dreams that are around you. He gives you dreams and visions about himself, presenting himself as a healer, presenting himself as the different trees that you are getting to learn about. That is why I always say it is never a waste of time to spend time with God. Because the more you spend time with God, the more you get to know you, the real you. He will never present himself to you the way that he's going to present himself to somebody else who serves a different purpose. God is to all of us what we ought to be. What we are, he is. That is why we mirror him or we are supposed to mirror him. Every single one of us has the opportunity to mirror God by becoming who he is according to what he has called you to be. We are all called to reflect him, all of us, according to what he has called us to be. So when you want to know what knowledge is, get to know your God. Get to know him. Say, Lord, I want to know you. Because you are, you, are, you are simply saying, in other words, you are saying, I want to know me. Let me just put it that way for you, that you may understand. When you begin your journey of knowing God or seeking to know God, you are seeking the real you. You are seeking to know you and what you truly can. And the more you behold him, the more you behold your true identity. The more you become a solution to your generation and not a burden. The more you realize, I'm not stranded. God has, God has my back. I am not stranded. There's, there are so many opportunities. The world needs me. When you finally get to that place where you realize you are needed, the world doesn't have to do you a favor. It actually needs you. But for you to be needed, you need to come into your godly state, your godly identity. The world cannot resist God. Cannot. It cannot. So how do you space? Because when you do that, people will pay you according to your desperation. Because they don't necessarily need what you are bringing them because it's nothing new. 
You're not bringing anything new to the table. Only God is constantly releasing new things. That is why the Bible says the angels are ever in awe of him and worshipping him, saying, Holy, holy are you, Lord. Why? They are forever beholding a different facet of his glory. And that can be you. If you allow yourself to be a reflector of who he is according to what he has called you to do in this world, you are ever fresh. You are ever coming up with relevant solutions to your time. You are never out of ideas. You are never depressed and constantly copying what other people are doing. Why? Because you are constantly oozing with new ideas. Because the well of life is within your belly. And the more you get to know him, the more that well becomes like a fountain. It just oozes with living waters. Those living waters are the new ideas that you carry for every single season of your life. Problems are meant to showcase our potential. Problems are meant to showcase the best of what we carry if we understand them right. If we submit them before the Lord to say, Lord, you threw this my way because there's something new you're doing. And now you're closing the doors to the old. What are you doing? I know I've been at this job for more than 20 years. But there's a reason why you are closing that door. There's a reason why I have not been getting promoted no matter what, I'm, what I do. What are you doing? Where do you want me to be? Because some of you, you are frustrated that you are not getting promoted. You've been working so hard. You are even becoming better. Because you are asking yourself, but I've been here and I've, I've been working so hard. Why am I not getting promoted? You are praying. You've been praying for years for a promotion. And it's not coming. Could it be that God wants you to wake up to your true potential? Could it be that the promotion you are crying for doesn't even come close to where God wants to take you? And he's saying, let the children have it, but I'm taking you to a higher place. But your eyes need to open that you may understand where I'm taking you and the requirements of where I'm taking you. Because I'm not going to take you there in the state that you are in. It's a time of training, beloveds. God is calling you to a place of learning. And I'm learning some things. And you are going to learn those things in whatever space that God is going to be putting you in. Learning from God doesn't mean that you become inactive. When I started this, I spoke about the fact that today I'm specifically talking to teachers. And there's something that God has been saying. I've been saying this since last year. The minute I went on social media, I started talking about this. That God is calling some of you to be teachers at home, to homeschool some students. It's not everyone who's going to homeschool their children. But there are those that God will ensure that they participate in what he's saying. And those children are going to need teachers. God does not say a word and does not and, and not provide for it. He provides. Some of you got fired because God wants you to come and homeschool our children. To learn his new system that he's going to employ. You have no idea by the time the new system is adopted. You have no idea where God is going to take you. You have no idea. Because those that God is grafting in this time, these are pioneers in the different systems. That means that they are going to go to the very top of those systems in order to teach everybody else the new. So don't despise 
what is happening in this time. I spoke about this before it happened because God wanted you to know that it is not an accident. He's at work. He's at work. Some of you have never been admitted in permanent posts. Until now. And like I said, some of you don't even have to wait for the government to vomit you out. Take a leap of faith. Believe God. Trust God. Trust God. There is one cost that can never be taken away that comes with the promises of God. And that is you can't walk into the promises of God with the old. You can't have one foot this side and another foot this side. It doesn't work for that. Because our currency is faith. I can't do it for you. I can bring you this far by giving you the word of the Lord and an understanding of what God is doing in this time. But you have to take that step for yourself. You have to decide, Lord, I am ready. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm scared. It's okay to say I'm scared, Lord. This is a new territory altogether. Help me. Holy Spirit is a helper of all things. Help me. I want to obey you. Help me. Where do I start? What do I do? And he will help you. And he will make you understand. Even those of you who are thinking, but what went to school is some hala, but went to media. I've said this before. I said, you know, so you we need to put our thinking caps on sometimes. Just just doing that. In communities where we grew up for the longest time, we have people, yes, that will say, I cannot afford to pay for school for my child. But think about it, beloved. Now that the children will be going to school from home, and by the way, there's a very present threat out there concerning children. It's not just because God wants to train teachers. But there is a threat out there to, in this time, in this year, concerning children. That is why God wants us to homeschool our children. So those of you that say, I cannot, able, I am not able to afford homeschooling. Yes, you can. My dear, I will do a lot more back. I will do a lot transport that way. When my dear homeschooling. If my neighbor is going to be a teacher, let's say a old and for example and all the parents can only afford 500 kula each you gather the children in one space maybe 10 of them because 10 you have to make sure it's a minimum number 10 or 8 or 7 it's not a lot and it's very easy to find children who are staying in that neighborhood I'm talking about those that will be taking a larger number. They can't afford anything beyond that. And you school, you homeschool those children at the end of the month. That may not be money that can afford you the kind of life that you want. But remember, this is not permanent. For some of you, it might get permanent because God will then show you or introduce you into higher places to homeschool because of how, how, how you are thriving at it. To homeschool parents who will not mind paying you handsomely for that. You have no idea what, it, what awaits you. But like I said, we are in a time of training. So when you are going through training, you don't get a salary. You get what we call an allowance. But the Lord's allowance will be more than enough for everything you need. On your way to abundance. On your way to abundance. God wants to prepare you for your inheritance. I hope that we learned something today. I hope that we will pray some of you who are listening, you may have not regarded you, yourself as a teacher. 
but as I was giving you this word, God might have sparked something in your spirit, man, to show you that you have a gift that needs to be taught others. Please take that very seriously. Seek God about it and find out what he's saying about it so that you, you will know the fullness of what God wants to do with your life in this time. I hope that you are blessed by this word. And if you have any questions concerning this word, please forward your questions on our inbox and then they will get to those questions and see them through and then we will see which questions need to be addressed and we will address those questions for you. Hallelujah, beloveds. I'm sorry for that. I was I was reading something very interesting uh, that some of you are writing out today. So please, beloveds, very, very seriously. If you didn't hear anything else that I said, don't worry about book critical thinking too much. I can't teach this the way it deserves to be to be taught in two hours. Some of these things, God will give us a platform someday to teach them in greater lengths that people may get an understanding of what God is saying and what God is doing and the ways of God and how we can adopt them to make our country greater. To make sure that we do not kill the dreams of men but we resurrect them and we allow them to serve not only them but our nation at large. The last thing I want to say is the Lord has been talking to me um, recently about resurrecting our uh, segment of dream interpretation. For those of you that do not know, uh, the Lord has given me the ability by the grace of the Spirit to interpret dreams. Dreams are very important in this hour because many of you, as you are praying to God for a way forward, as you are praying to God to know his will for your lives, he's busy answering you through dreams that you may not understand and that may need to be interpreted for you to be able to know and understand what God is saying. Some of you are frustrated because you are like, but I've been praying, I've been asking God for, for his will and he's not saying anything. He might have answered you many, many times in your dreams that you failed to discern and understand what the dream meant. Even those details that you may deem as irrelevant or confusing and then may be tempted to not write them down, please write them down. You'll be shocked to know and understand what the Lord is saying concerning uh, your life with those very dreams. So we are going to encourage those of you that would love for your dreams to be interpreted to send them to our WhatsApp uh, number that is given on our page and then we are going to compile those dreams I'm gonna have a day where I just go through all of them and by the leading of the spirit I'll be able to interpret those dreams and then what I will do is because of time and the fact that there are so many other things that have to be taken care of this side we will do one we will pick a day according to the leading of the Lord Probably during one of the, the weekdays, we'll pick a day, maybe once in every two weeks, where I'll go live and I will read out those dreams. Don't worry, we're not going to include your names. The reason why we want to do it this way is because oftentimes from my experience with the Lord and interpreting people's dreams uh, for years now, I've come to the, the knowledge and the acknowledgement of the fact that when God speaks in a certain season, he releases a similar word to different people just in different ways. But there will be certain uh, attributes of those dreams that are going to be similar. And when I interpret somebody's dream, the reason why we want to do it life is because one dream can literally answer a hundred or more people that maybe have had a similar dream or a similar experience in their life and thereby God will be addressing many of us at once because like I said beloved 
So we have to be smart in terms of how we share the word of the Lord and how we equip you with what God is doing. And if it's something that is seasonal, if we are going to be interpreting for every individual, uh, by the time we get to you, maybe that time the dream or whatever instruction God was giving you would have been too late for you to perform that which God is asking you to do. So we need to understand that when God speaks in a certain season, He speaks to many. He doesn't speak to one person. He speaks to many. And many of you will even learn uh, certain patterns uh, concerning dreams and you may be able to start to understand some of your dreams without even having to submit them for interpretation. Even though I will put this out there as a disclaimer, Something may mean one thing now and mean something completely different in another dream based on the context of the dream. That is why I always, always to this day seek Holy Spirit to give me understanding before I can make a conclusion of what that dream means. So that being said, I hope you are blessed. I hope this word has helped you somehow, especially those of you that are teachers or that aspire to be teachers. May you know beyond what I have said to you. May the Spirit expound on that word and tailor make that word for your specific issue or your specific uh, life situation that you may be able to thrive in this time and come into the fullness of your assignment. God bless you. And God keep you and have a wonderful evening.